Hey everybody, it's Eric Arcadian, and today we're going to be talking about singing bowls. No! Just kidding. That was a cereal bowl. This is a singing bowl. We're going to go over a little about how they work, how to play them, and how you might use them in meditation or ritual. A big shout out to Lisette, Trisha, and Eric, my newest Patreon supporters. I'm so grateful for you guys. You help make videos like this possible. Let's get started. A lot of times, instruments like this are specifically called Tibetan singing bowls, and you'll find them decorated with sacred characters like the symbol for Om. But did they actually come from Tibet? I mean, that's a valid question, right? If you search for the history of singing bowls, it's actually kind of difficult to find a written account that is not from a company that sells singing bowls kind of weird. These websites make claims that singing bowls are 5,000 years old. Okay, that's a lot of years. So where is the archaeological evidence? Where are the museum pieces? Where are the mentions in history books and encyclopedias? Some of these websites also make claims that the history of singing bowls is so secret and steeped in mystery that monks and mystics were forbidden from writing it down. Hmm, I guess that explains it. Well, I suppose I'm going to unveil a great mystery today to my friends, my fellow witches, and to aspiring yoga teachers across the world. I hate to be the one to break this to you, but your ancient Tibetan singing bowl is neither ancient nor Tibetan. What you have is probably a very well-designed new age product born of marketing, consumerism, and perhaps tourism. They started being manufactured and imported into the West probably sometime around 1970 from India, which, hmm, let me check, is not part of Tibet. Now, that doesn't mean that it's snake oil or garbage, Personally, I love my singing bowl and firmly believe that it has a proper place in both ritual and meditation. It's just that the ritual uses are modern and don't stem from like an ancient form of Buddhism or something. There are similar instruments that are legitimately attested in history, like the standing bell. Basically, a large inverted bell that was cast from a metal like copper or bronze and played by striking. They're shaped like bowls and range in size from a few centimeters all the way up to a meter in diameter. They've been called by many different names throughout history, such as Ren Gong, Buddha Bowl, Resting Bell, and Bowl Gong. The invention of the bell itself is generally traced back to China sometime around the 16th century BCE. There's usually three things associated with a singing bowl the bowl itself, the cushion, and the striker, or mallet. These types of instruments are classified as idiophones, which are instruments where the sound is produced by the body of the instrument vibrating. Now, depending on how you play the singing bowl, it could be further classified as either a struck idiophone or a friction idiophone. I'll show you both ways. First option, as a struck idiophone, is to just take the striker and hit it on the side. That was weak. This is more in line with how a standing bell would have been played, perhaps to signal the start or end of a ceremony or meditation. The second option, as a friction idiophone, is to take the striker and slide it around the outside rim, which will produce a sustained tone or hum. Mm -hmm. 
this is what really sets it apart as being a singing bowl as opposed to just being a standing bell. Playing it like this might take a few tries, but I promise it's easy. Give it about five minutes and you'll be a pro. I'm gonna give you some tips. First, I don't really use the cushion very often. I just use my hand. You'll want to keep an open palm like this. A lot of people will try to grip the sides of the singing bowl with their fingers and watch what that does to the sound. It mutes it. Second, let's talk about holding the striker. Now, I see this a lot as if you're about to stab the singing bowl, and I guess that works fine, especially if you're playing a much bigger instrument. Just make sure that you're not so locked up in your grip. Personally, I hold it more like a paintbrush or pencil, and I find that that gives me a little bit more flexibility. As you play the singing bowl, it's okay to speed up or slow down and vary your pressure. In fact, sometimes it's easier to start off quickly to get things going and then slow down and kind of ease into the pressure as you get a feel for the vibrations. You'll notice that my striker is covered in suede. If you have an all wood striker, it will still work, just not as well. Uh, watch what happens if I play with the all wood side. Okay, so it still works, but it's a little bit harder to get things going and there's also a lot more scratching sounds. So, open palm, holding the striker like a paintbrush, and I'm going to start moving quickly around the outer rim to get things going. And as I start to feel these vibrations, I'm gonna adjust my speed and add a little bit of pressure to keep things going this way. Okay, and if you're having a particularly hard time getting things started, feel free to strike the side of the singing bowl and then kind of just slide into those vibrations. It looks kind of like this. That should help you get a feel for the right speed and pressure. All right, let's fucking play this thing. Wait, 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 wait. What are you expecting? I only have one singing bowl. I can only play one note. So instead of me playing you a song or something, I'm going to invite you to meditate with me for 60 seconds. No cheating, no skipping forward in the video, Let's do this together. Close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and let's go.
I hope that was good for you. I hope you feel a little bit more refreshed now. By the way, if you hear a slight warbling in the sound, something kind of like wow, 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 there's actually a very interesting acoustic phenomenon going on called a beat. Basically, this bowl is not perfect. Different sections of the bowl are producing ever so slightly different tones, overtones, and harmonics. When you take two sounds that vary slightly in frequency and you play them simultaneously, parts of the sound wave are either canceled out or amplified, producing that rhythmic warbling effect. This is the same concept that people talk about when they're using binaural beats for achieving a trance or meditation state. We'll talk about this a lot more in depth in a future video. I just thought it was interesting enough to merit a mention here and now. Singing bowls come in lots of different sizes and materials today. Although you'll frequently find them made out of a metal like copper or bronze, like the one I have here today, you can also get them made out of crystal, which usually use ground up quartz crystals that are fused with a resin and then molded into a bowl shape. The crystal ones are beautiful and often very loud, but they can get very expensive. Regardless of the material, you'll find them sold both individually and as sets. When you buy them as a set, they're usually tuned to different notes that are supposed to represent the different chakras, which means you'll frequently find them in sets of seven. When you have a set that big, it's a lot of fun. You just set them up in a circle around you on the floor, meditate, sit, and play. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. Just do what feels right. Let's talk about some magical uses. Many traditions use some form of bell in their ritual. In our coven, for instance, we tap and ring, which means tapping on the altar three times with the wand and then ringing a bell three times. We do this at the start of every ritual. I've seen people use singing bowls to do this and I think it works great. Although personally, I'm a little more likely to just grab a small hand bell. Obviously, there's tons of applications for sound healing or sound magic here. You can use the tone of a singing bowl as a trigger to help get you into a trance or meditative state. If you're trying to work with a specific chakra, for instance, you can get a singing bowl that is tuned to that particular note. But the great thing is you get basically the same effect just by listening to the sounds. So if you don't want to invest in a full singing bowl set, there are plenty of recordings available on YouTube or streaming platforms. And even if you don't believe in any of this sound healing stuff, they're still great for relaxation. One of my favorite uses for singing bowls is to energetically charge or cleanse things. I've charged candles this way. Sometimes I'll play it over top of an incense blend that I'm making as sort of an energetic refresher before I finish everything up. I've also seen people use it to charge water, like literally pouring water into the singing bowl, playing the singing bowl, and then using that water for another ritual purpose. You can also use sound as a diagnostic tool. There are some healing modalities, for instance, that ring a bell over the body in order to trace where an ailment is coming from. Similarly, you can walk around your house with a bell during a home purification ritual, listen to the tones, and get a sense of how things are going. Not to mention, historically, the ringing of bells has been associated with driving out evil spirits. So that's a bunch of different ideas to get you started, but really you're only limited by your imagination and what you want to accomplish. By the way, if you think of any other interesting magical ideas, please post them in the comments. That way we can all benefit. In terms of beginner playing difficulty, this one gets a solid one out of five. Really, there is no difficulty at all. This is a single note instrument. 
You can't play it wrong. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment to like and subscribe here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Eric Arcadian. But if you'd like to help support me making more content in the future, please go check out my Patreon page at Eric Arcadian. I've got a lot of cool stuff up there for patrons only. For instance, I just released a full album. So all of the tracks, special liner notes and graphics are up there for download. And if you already support me on Patreon, thanks again. I appreciate you. Remember, there's always a way to make music. Until next time.